Yesterday, Democrats unveiled their new plan to speak to how to attract voters. They talked about a better deal. It was quite interesting. You have a lot of Democrats who are saying that uh, the focus should be on rural America and not urban America. Y'all might want to check who voted for y'all. I'm just saying, may want to change that plan. But the reality is what's happening in American cities uh, does indeed drive what is happening in other parts of the country. Uh, what we're seeing, of course, uh, in Newark, New Jersey, and other cities is that mayors uh, are not necessarily uh, getting an administration who understands big cities. They talk a good game, but they don't follow through. Let's chat with Newark's Mayor, Roz Baraka, who joins us right now. Mayor, how you doing? I'm great, man. Thank uh, you. Here's an interesting the reason I'm saying, I, I set it up that way. Republicans love to talk about block grants. Let's just give it to the states and they'll figure it out. But for years, mayors have been saying, and mayors told President Barack Obama, stop sending money to the states right. and send directly to the cities because we have a much better understanding of our residents than state interest. Talk about why that's so important. Not only is that, that is right, uh, you know, right on the money, but, you know, a lot of times politics gets involved in it. So when it gets to the state, depending on who the governor is, uh, you have to lobby the, the state to be able to get the money that's supposed to go to your city. It might go to a couple of cities, just not yours. You know, it might go to cities that don't look like the demographics don't uh, look like the folks that need actually, actually need the money, right? So it might not be a city where black and brown people are. Right, so the states get to disseminate that money in ways that they see fit, and most of the time it's political, and doesn't get to the point uh, or to the center of the problem. And and then the states are not on the ground, right? The cities, the mayors, we're right on the ground. We're right where the problems are. We know exactly what to do with the money. We have folks uh, that are trying to deal with the country's most vulnerable populations and most difficult and complex issues. Uh, we are, says a new movie coming out called Detroit, talking about right. the riots, of course, in 67. Uh, just the other day, uh, the, the Detroit uh, Free Press live tweeted uh, the, the, on the anniversary as right. if it was happening in real time. <laughs> uh, when people talk about uh, the riots that took place in Newark, uh, and we're talking 50 years, uh, and you're still having to deal with the after effects of that, right. how have you also have, how have you tried to change the narrative because it, we, we, if you talk to people and they say, man, where are you from? Newark. Oh, man, uh-oh. <laughs> and the same, same thing with Detroit. There's certain, there's certain cities where people automatically think uh, 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 despair, whoa. Talk about in terms of how you have tried to change the city. Well, first, I think you change the way people view it inside of the city. I think the, the residents of the town have to begin to feel like the city is moving forward for them, that the city is theirs and the progress and the development that takes place uh, is something that they could own. Uh, and then they have to become ambassadors for that. And then, you know, the media and the press kind of likes to paint the city uh, as a negative, as hopeless, as in despair, particularly since uh, during these times when rebellions took place, black folks began to take over the city's infrastructure, began to take over the city's power. Uh, so it, it served, the, you know, the, the bigger uh, infrastructure well, the superstructure well to say, oh, the, the city is going backward, it's down, it's violent, it's terrible, it's never going to get back, uh, at, particularly at the time when we began to take control. Right, so uh, that's a that's a narrative that we have to destroy. That we have to begin to show prosperity, economic development, the great things that are happening in the community, drive crime down, uh, you know, create jobs, deal with homelessness, all of the real serious issues that take place in our community that particularly affect Black and Brown people in the most. We have to deal with those, and, and we need a direct. Uh, kind of line to the federal government and state governments to be able to make these things happen. Cities can't do them by themselves. Education is a huge thing, uh, obviously, for lots of people, one I believe in as well. Uh, I'm, I've always been a supporter of school choice. My philosophy is if traditional schools work, I'm down with it. If charter schools work, I'm down with it. I, I don't like failure. I don't care what it is. Right. I don't like failure. Uh, and so uh, you've been having them dealing with that as well. Uh, there are charter supporters who say you are a vehement opponent. Uh, the traditional schools uh, uh, say that uh, uh, more needs to be done there. What's the state of education in Newark? I think we're doing a lot better than, than we have been. Uh, you know, there's still problems of inequity, uh, still, still problems of, of funding that's not there. Uh, we need more funding. And while we fight each other over uh, should the money go here or should the money go there, we're being underfunded uh, in totality. And, and that's really what it is. You know, we're still funding uh, schools based on property taxes, which uh, is inherently uh, in, unequal. You know, obviously in places well, what, like What's Newark, the average in Newark in terms of per child? How much is being allocated per child in Newark? 
I would say it's, uh, you know, somewhere close to uh, fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars per child. Fifteen to eighteen thousand in Newark, which which is uh, was higher than a lot of other places, but also yeah. uh, location is important. Go ahead. Well, I mean, th because the 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 state funds the the schools through property tax, they have to supplement. Uh, you know what this co what the costs are in Abbott versus Burke the state Supreme Court said that this was unconstitutional and that the state had to supplement Education in this in the state of New Jersey. They have never fully funded Abbott So we've always been fighting for resources uh, in these cities and when money comes to uh, The traditional public school system and they have to pull money off of the top without a real serious formula of equity uh, then then people suffer. So now you take the people and now they're fighting each other over resources. And the argument becomes the folks at the top argue what's better, charter or traditional. And then they, the charter school opponents tear down, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, charter schools. The traditional schools do the same. So that we're out here fighting, but mainly the resources are not there, and nobody's talking about cognitive demand or what's taking place in the classroom or what's happening uh, in terms of the curriculum, access to, to resources, after-school programming, the whole child. Nobody's having those discussions about how kids are actually becoming successful. We're having a discussion about what's better, uh, traditional or charter school, which I think is a ridiculous uh, kind of argument. When the real problem is we do not have the resources. Angela. Mr. Mayor, congratulations on all the success you've had in Newark. You know, you've plugged like a 93 million hole in the budget without laying anybody off. You've talked about responsibility in terms of the responsibility of you, the mayor, the parents, the police force. But at the end of the day, a lot of people have dreams of helping a city. There's something different about you and what you're doing in terms of who you are. What, what is that in terms of your relationship to the community? Well, I was born and raised in Newark, you know, number one. I mean, my best friends and worst enemies lived there, right? So uh, I used to tell the teachers when I was a principal that, look, you got to be careful what you do to these kids. I live here, you know, so I'm going to see their mama in the supermarket. So at, at the end of the day, the, the things that we do and I do in the city uh, are based on the fact that I actually grew up, that I lived there, that my family has a legacy there, my father and mother have worked hard in that community. My mother, my mother still lives there, you know, so uh, if I do something you that's incorrect, she's going to say father. something. You might want to your father is. <laughs> my, oh, my father, Mary Baraka, uh, you know, uh, was an activist, a poet, uh, international, in my uh, view, scholar, you know, uh, you knew he loved Newark and fought for it all of his life. Uh, so, you know, if, if I do something that, that that I don't think, or that my mama don't think is right, she's gonna say something to me about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> brother Mayor, you know, congratulations, I have my congratulations. And thank you, brother, for sending your graduates, I know your old high school principal, to historically black colleges, including right. Howard. You sent a lot of them to us, brother, That's and right. keep them coming. I, I wanna ask you along the same lines, continue this conversation around this, uh, this national platform the Democrats have unrolled, this, uh, this better deal. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to have a feel, and there was an op-ed in today's New York Times that talked about that, for the people on the ground. I remember the night you got Ain't elected. no soul in that. Plan. How about that, brother? Which Never is exactly was. my question. Just I remember saying. the night you got elected. Ain't no soul in that plan, as, as Roland says. The night you got elected when you said, you know, when I become the mayor, we become the mayor. Right. At your father's funeral, man, seeing those grassroots folk there and really invested. You know, how important, because you're not just the mayor of Newark, brother, you're a national figure. How important is this Democrat, does it, how important is it for the Democratic Party to understand that you're not going to do anything without black and brown folks and that it really has to be a local conversation. You can't run this right. as a national election campaign after election campaign cycle. If they don't understand that now, man, I, I don't know uh, what, what needs to happen for them to really understand. I think it's at a crossroads now in the, mm -hmm. the party uh, post Obama and after this election, you know, they're trying to figure out why uh, Hillary didn't win the race. I, I, I would say they disenfranchised black and brown people. They disenfranchised them. They gutted the, the voter rights act. Voter suppression. Voter suppression. They did that. Nobody's talking about that. We're talking about the Russians, but we're not talking about voter suppression. And I, I as much as I can, I, I, I talk about that over and over and over again, you know, how and how they're still trying to suppress more voters, pull people off the roads. They're still trying to do that. I think it was a plan before Trump even got in the race that they were going to make sure that black and brown people did not have the same kind of power and authority that they had. In oh, yes. No, no, no. That's no, no, happening. no. That, no, that was a, no, that was a clear, the clear plan. Yeah. Uh, and this plan actually has been in place since the 1965 Voting Rights Act. That's right. Uh, and that plan has been in place uh, consistently. And of course, the election of President Barack Obama. And the reason I say that, so anybody out there, which is why I keep trying to tell people, <laughs> if you look at African Americans, you had a consistent rise in black voter turnout right. through every presidential election. All of a sudden, it dips. 
And all of a sudden they go like, oh, what happened? Uh, well, yeah. we know exactly what happened. Right. And you saw voter suppression take That's place. Right. That's right. That's right. 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 Mr. Mayor, I have a question for you. With the success of yourself and your election, Chokwe Lumumba in Jackson, Mississippi, and the rise of Nikita Oliver in Seattle, That's there's right. this idea that black progressives can take over in the local sense, but those are just three. Are you guys the exception, or is there a template that can be applied across the nation? I, th I think that it, there's definitely a template and that we need to, I mean, I called Chokwe. Uh, when he won, I was with his dad in D.C. at a conference. Well, uh, could you maybe tell folks who his father, well, his father was? His father was also Chokwe Lumumba. No question. Uh, who uh, was a long time, you know, historical and uh, uh, figure for African Americans in this in this country. Fought hard, a lawyer. But uh, you know, when he was running for office, I was with him in D.C. You know, I supported his campaign. He won. I won right after that. Unfortunately, he passed, and I supported his son, you know, and I called him and congratulated him uh, after that. And I think that progressives uh, need to begin to start dialoguing and sticking together and talking about programs and policies and how we begin to affect change uh, in our communities and how do we get other people elected uh, who have a line that is not traditional, uh, especially now in this time. Well, well can I a follow -up? You know, one of your fellow Howard uh, uh, alum, uh, the mayor of Atlanta, Kasim right, right, Reed, right. Uh, has has perhaps a little bit different politics. Uh, some people might call him a neoliberal. I'm thinking about my brother Cornell West. How 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 do you handle the diversity of thought in this new generation? A Kamala Harris, a Cory Booker, yeah. yourself. I mean, I know you and Cory were on with city council together at the time. How do we grapple with that? Because all the black folks don't think alike. Absolutely, and and Kasim is my friend. He's helped yes, me several I know times. That's why. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going down to Atlanta at the end of the week for a fundraiser. <laughs> But uh, you know, we, I think debate is important yes. to begin to have the the kind of dialogue because ultimately in these cities, uh, you know, we have to make things happen. Yes. You know, people uh, listen to you go back and forth, pontificate, argue with each other, but we have to make things happen. We have to get the garbage collected. You have to get people hired. You have to deal with homelessness. You have to fill potholes. All these kinds of things. You have to deal with real concrete issues, and we have to dis discuss the uh, things with each other. Figure out how to get these things done, how to maximize uh, the resources that we have. Uh, and then we talk uh, ideological issues at the same time. How do we push the country uh, to become more, more and more progressive? And well, then that's when the debate gets. But, but is it important for people to also understand, and for some reason I think a lot of people don't understand this, there are different things in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. How a Kasim Reed has to govern in Atlanta is different than how you can govern in Newark. The constituency for Kamala Harris, when she's in, she's attorney, when well, she's attorney general in California, but before that, the DA. And so, if you, so if, if you're an African American mayor in the Southwest, it will differ from the Southeast. It will differ from the East. It will differ from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And so, I think a lot of times, uh, folks get caught up in that. Whereas, to be perfectly honest, on the Republican side, look, you conservative or more conservative. Or damn near crazy, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, no. It's, so it's, it's yeah. not. And so I think what happens is people don't understand that. Look, you have to govern in different ways. And, and when, when I run across like Republican mayors too, I mean, you would be surprised. Uh, you know, some of them, the kind of progressive lines, even even some of them yeah. have basically because they have to deal with constituencies that have real issues and problems that they have to address, or they can't get elected. Right, so, and, 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 and that becomes, uh, I think, what, what, what you're saying, Roland, that all over the country, the constituencies change. But, you know, underneath all of that, you always have a, a kind of fundamental and foundational kind of idea about the way you want to see community, the way you want to see the country and the government and, and, and the direction that it should go in. You know, I have, a, I have a concern for our young people right now in terms of them looking at leadership and what leadership means. As a mayor, um, what, what would you say to young people who are looking at you and, and other elected officials across the country in terms of governing and, and, and what is leadership outside of a title and being seen at a podium talking and giving a directive? What is leadership? Well, I mean, I, I don't think leadership has anything to do with title, right? Uh, title and, and, and position is just like a geographic location, right? So they're, they're leaders who do not have titles at all, right? The, mm -hmm. the position and title gives you leverage, but it doesn't make you a leader, right? So uh, me being a mayor of the city gives me leverage, gives me the, the uh, uh, re a power and authority over resources to be able to do specific things. It still doesn't make me a leader, right? Uh, uh, it gives me the title. Leadership is, is cultivated and developed. 
you know, based on people's character, based on what you can do, based on the, the I always say leaders have following, right? If nobody following you, then you're not a leader, <laughs> right? So uh, at, at the end of the day, there, there's something specifically different than being a leader than having a position or a title. Uh, yeah. Real quick, Ray. Lastly, talk about the importance of Howard University and the development of who you are as a man. So often we think that HBCUs are relevant today. What is H your experience U? with that? Uh, HBCUs you know. is, <laughs> uh, they're, they're completely relevant. I continue to send people there. We still churn out the, the most African-American professionals uh, that, that, that come out of this country's universities and colleges. Uh, it made me who I am in terms of uh, you know my uh, decisiveness, what I want to do, uh, the fire I have in my belly, the things that I want to create and develop. Uh, and, and the idea that I can actually get it done. Yes, sir. Right? That, that's very important, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Absolutely. Newark Mayor Ros Morocco, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, man. All right, folks. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. Oh, no. That ain't going to cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.